Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning on this World Communion Sunday, the day when Christians worldwide all celebrate the Lord's Supper together. There's a few announcements that I need to make. We are this morning starting to make one more step towards getting back to normal so that um, the offertory and communion will be passed. If you are uncomfortable taking, either putting the offering into the plate or taking one of the um, communion things off of the plate, there are, you can still leave your offering in, in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. And there is also a communion you can take there as well. And we will all try to remember how we did communion before. Highlights. Um, on October 30th, we will have our 50-year member service and Heritage Sunday, and there is an, an announcement for that. On the back, there is um, the announcement for Crop Walk, and I know Lynn wants to make some comments. Yeah, we're walking uh, two weeks from today on the 16th. Um, you can see me and get an envelope if you'd like to be a walker, or you can just donate to me and I will put it in uh, somebody who is walking on their envelope. But please um, participate. It helps hunger worldwide. And um, we've always had a successful campaign at our church. So. I'll be next door. We tried in the back. It didn't work. So I'll be next door during fellowship time. Please see me, and I'll either give you an envelope or take your donation. Thank you. The day before the crop walk on October 15th, we are having the church flea market. Joanne, do you want to make any comments about that? Thank you. And Kathy, I'm assuming you want to make an announcement about I also would like to publicly thank of everyone who turned out and helped to make last night's fundraiser for Ukraine such a wonderful success. As of right now, we raised $950. Um, and so, so thank you for your support. Are there any other announcements that need to come before us at this time? Seeing none, let us begin our worship with, uh, oh, did you have an uh, announcement? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Let us begin our worship with our, our prelude.
Please join me in the call to worship. Place your trust in the Lord. God shall hear our suffering and pain. Place your faith in God's abiding presence. We shall be strengthened. Place your lives always in God's care. We shall be made whole in the Lord of all compassion. Let us pray. Holy God, throughout the world today, Christians are sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We come together with a bountiful table set in the midst of struggle and strife. Help us to receive the elements of bread and wine for the nourishment of our souls and for the strengthening of our witness to your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in our opening hymn, number 307, God of grace and God of glory. God calls us to live lives with hearts wide open. And yet, if we are honest, we know that we close our hearts more often than not. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we need a spirit of love and acceptance to flood into our lives this day. 
Even though we celebrate World Communion Sunday with the giving of the bread and cup, still we harbor anger against others. We act out of frustration rather than love. We hoard your gifts and only grudgingly share our bounty with others. We find ways to turn our backs on you, claiming that other things are more important than our faith. And then in the midst of struggle and strife, we come back to you awash in tears and sorrow. We ask for your help and salvation. Remind us again, holy God, that your love has always and will always be with us. Heal us from our selfishness and our apathy. Give us courage and strength for the ministries in which you have placed us. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, from the beginning of all creation, God's word was love. That love has been lavished upon you, not because you did anything to earn it, but because it is God's great gift to you. Live in that love and bring peace to others. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, as we hear your word, may we be people of living faith. May we live as people of gospel power. May we embody the spirit of and love, the spirit that is ours by the grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our first lesson this morning is from Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry out for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me, and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end, it does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The second lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord repl replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, 
you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. We can never do more than what is expected of us. This sentence in the Bible commentary I use stopped me in my tracks because it changed how I looked at the last part of the passage from Luke. We can never do more than what is expected from us. This means that there is no room for anything extra. If the bare minimum is expected, that is most likely what will be given. Many of us know this fact from our family systems because many of us struggle as adults with the identities that characterized us to our families as children. The smart one, the quiet one, the troublemaker, the this, the that, and we suddenly became to embody what was expected of us. Jesus states that faith is the opposite of low expectations. In fact, Jesus says that low expectations hinder faith. If we had faith as small as a mustard seed, we could do so much. The problem is most of us don't. We don't expect much from our faith. We give lip service to faith and its importance but we live as if our faith doesn't really do much in our lives. Jesus called out the disciples on this lack of faith. Jesus calls us out for the same thing. We live our lives like faith is a nice add-on, not expecting that much. We live our lives, we plan, we do our best, and it seems like if all that doesn't help, then we turn to our faith. But what would happen if we started by turning to our faith first, and then planned, and then did our best, and then lived? I believe that if we do this, we allow God to enter our lives and work miracles. In Matthew's version of this passage, it says that if we had just a little bit of faith, we could move mountains. Just enough faith as a mustard seed will allow us to do what we can barely dream of. This passage needs to be a sign of hope and encouragement for us. Just a teeny weeny amount of faith actively in our lives can give us the power to accomplish things that we cannot even imagine. 
It all starts with allowing our faith to guide us and lead us when times are good. It is so much easier to try something new when things are going well. Then once the pattern is, is set, when things get hard, the habit will already be in place. There are many times when our lives feel like the passage from the prophet Habakkuk. Destruction, violence, strife, and contention seem to have moved into this world and seems to have no plans on moving out anytime soon. And instead of being discouraged by the state of the world, we can put our faith into action. We can live with our faith leading the way. We can live the way we want our life to be. We can be the example of faithful living to others. And most importantly, we can ignore the critics and believe in ourselves and our dreams. We can live beyond the expectations others have of and for us. We can believe that more, much more is possible for us, for our faith community, for our world. All it takes is living with God's expectations, not human ones. And when we do that, we can all live lives that are full of miracles and hope every single day. Amen. I invite all who are able to rise as we affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join in our next hymn, number 435, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
Please be seated. We have now come to the time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. And we start with some sad news. Um, Bill Balog was born into eternal life Thursday evening. It is bittersweet, Karen, that we welcome you back to worship this morning. Um, but we know that you and Bill and your daughter and your daughter in in law as as well we know that you and bill watched us faithfully online it's good to have you with us but our, our hearts break with you um, bill's service will be here tuesday morning at 10 30 and the visitation will be at costello's in avenel um, on monday evening or what time is the four to eight on Monday. We also keep Debbie Polidura in our thoughts and prayers. Debbie is the grandmother of Michael Diaz, whose son we baptized two weekends ago, two Sundays ago, not that. She was the woman in the in the wheelchair. Um, she is in JFK with fluid on her in her lungs and multiple infections and pneumonia. So we keep Debbie and her family in our, our thoughts and prayers. Are there, we also keep Florida, Puerto Rico, um, the, the maritime of Canada and everyone else who is recovering from Hurricanes Fiona and Ian. Um, and are there any other joys and concerns? Seeing none, then with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ways in which you reach into our hearts and remind us that we are much more than we think we are. Enable us, Holy God, to live your vision of us each and every day so that we may be able to encourage others to do the same. Because in our hectic lives, holy God, it's so easy to lower our own expectations of ourselves as we do everything that calls to us. Remind us, holy God, of your love and your care. Remind us of the ways in which you invite joy and hope into our lives. On this day, holy God, we pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray, holy God, with all those people who celebrate and rejoice on this day, knowing that their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray, holy God, for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, holy God, for everyone who wrestles with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask 
that they know your hope. We also pray for all of those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our earth. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have our call to offering. All things come from the one of abundant grace. Let us give generously in token of the abundance of our thanks. The ushers will now come forward.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of tender mercy, may the gifts we bring before you this day turn groans of despair into shouts of gladness. Bless this offering with your abundant power that the world may know your grace and find life. Amen. Please. join with me in the responsive in invitation to communion. With Christians around the world, we come to the festival of love. We come with thanksgiving and praise. With believers from every continent on earth, come to the festival of grace. We come with thanksgiving and praise. With the whole body of Christ, Come to the festival of life. We come with thanksgiving and praise. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, in the beginning you brought forth life that every living thing might live in harmony in the great circle of life. After fashioning our frame from dust and bones of the earth, you placed your image within us and declared that it was not good for us to be alone, created to be in unity and harmony with creation and with one another. You sent us prophets and teachers when we broke fellowship with one another and when our pride sought out differences among us. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to fashion us into a holy community that would be his body here on earth. Even when dissent and division threatened to pull his followers apart, Jesus prayed that we might all be one in his name and shared with us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Holy are you, and blessed is your bread of heaven, Jesus Christ. When you sent Christ to be with us, he offered his very self, that we might have strength to stand when all hope seems lost. Through the mystery and blessing of this table, we invite you, holy God, into our presence. Tend us in our weakness and strengthen us through this bread and this cup. Amen. On the night in which he was going to be betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends. He took bread. He broke it. He gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you eat of this, remember me. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave God thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, shed from my blood, which is for the forgiveness of the world. As often as you drink this, remember me. Dear friends, God calls us to share in the holy feast. May the ushers please come forward.
take and eat. This is the cup of blessing. Take and drink. Please join me in our unison prayer of thanksgiving that is found in your bulletin. With Christians around the world, we thank you, Holy God, for our witness of unity in a divided and broken world. May we always remember to share living bread with a world starving for spiritual food. May we go forth blessed through fellowship with Christ, to be in union with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for our final hymn, number 306, Bless Be the Tie That Binds. <laughs> 